All right, uh, we're back, <laughs> and it's um, uh, Comp three hundred five, week ten, lesson ten, part one. I can't believe it's week ten. We got four more weeks to go after this. Um, so we want to finish up um, the stuff we didn't get done on this section, which was I want to get my life counter and everything else working. Um, and there's some pieces that we were missing from uh, from this section, but let's recap to see what we've got. So again, this is FPS demo section one. So if we run it, um, again, we've got our little gun. Shoot, it gives the, you know, the impacts, right? So we got that kind of stuff going on. Barrel, explosions, right? All that stuff going on. We don't have a point, we don't have a point system yet. And we need to get that into place. And now there's a couple of things to do to get that into place, right? First of all, we have our canvas and we have our score, which is tagged as a score. And we have our life, which is scored as life. Um, we may need to get that. Uh, may not, but more or less these two are just, um, they're just labels, right? So we're going to kind of target these labels. And the way to do that, of course, is to have some kind of controller. So let's get that done first. And then we'll get into um, scripting uh, in a, a terrain, okay? So um, one thing I want to do is I want to right click and add a new uh, 3D, uh, sorry, a new empty object. And we have to make this, so let's make sure it's a, it's a kind of an empty object on its own. We'll make call this thing game controller. So our game controller is just um, a, uh, uh, it's got a, just a, that's wrong, let's, let's try this again, because we just added in a rec transform, which is not what I wanted. We don't want that kind of game controller, we want an empty object. Not that it makes a difference or whatever, but let's try that again. There we go, a regular transform. And we want to rename this thing game controller. Game controller. Now it's important for us to use uh, tag this thing as a game controller. This is one of the things that we should be doing as soon as we make it. It doesn't matter, we should reset it also to the zero position, although we won't see it physically on the screen. And so that's one. The other thing I want to try and do is we need, we have a player shooting uh, script, player shooting script, and what I want to do is with it is um, in, the, um, in the game controller, somehow what I want to do is keep track of our score and our life. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that we want to be able to do. Score and life. So this, the game controller uh, script will take care of our, our life and our score. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a reference to that game controller inside of our, um, our player shooting script. Because if you notice, our player shooting script looks like this. And there's a great opportunity for us to, when we um, you know, hit a barrel, so you know, I fire, I blow up the barrel, as an example, which uh, happens down here. So if I destroy the barrel, I instantiate the fire, right? And when I instantiate the fire, I want to increase my score. That's what I want to be able to do. So I want to see that uh, score change, right? And I'm going to do that because I'm going to, um, there's many ways I, I can do that, but what I want to try and do is when I, when I uh, uh, increase my score, there's a number of ways I could do that. I could um, have a score variable that's a variable to, available to me through the game controller, right? And, and I could have something called like an add score, uh, an add score method that I access, an accessor method somehow, a getter, if you will, or a setter, that sets the score or adds to the score. So let's, let's write this really quickly. So one, I need a script. So I'm going to go add component. Uh, I'm going to go to new scripts. And again, for the people in the other class, we've already done this, uh, but we're going to say, uh, we're going to say game controller. I'm going to write it in C sharp, right? And it says, Here's one, and this is what we had last time. A class called Game Controller already exists because we've had all these, these we've implemented all these kind of uh, Im uh, imported assets. Somewhere in our scripts, we have our Game Controller. So the way to do that is to go click on All Scripts, right, and look for uh, the script Game Controller. Now, if you notice, Game Controller there already exists. I don't want to use this one, so there's a couple things I can use. I can delete this. Now, there's already this is a barrel shooting game. Um, but I, I recommend just like because we're not going to make the barrel shooting game. We're just going to delete it. Okay, so let's just delete this script. Yay! And then enter game control. Let's try that again. So add new scripts, and we're going to go game controller. Okay, and a class called game controller already exists somehow. Hmm, how is that possible? We just deleted one. Where is that darn game controller? Game controller. So under scripts, there's no game controller, right? And if we look down here, this is the thing. We have to look down to see where that uh, game controller exists. And if I was to double click here, 
you can see that um, I'm accessing a script here that's called explode.cs, right? And explode.cs is, this is why we have to be very careful what we do, right? Explode.cs is another script that we have to use, right? So here's explode.cs, right, with a, an explosion effect. And um, so I could delete this one too. Now, be careful. Once we start deleting scripts, what ends up happening is our explosion stops to function. So let's go back and let's take a look at our, um, um, our uh, prefabs here for the explosion. We have some prefabs that we've already built. One of them is this explosion prefab. And we know that all it has is this self-destruct, right? But it also has some sub uh, files here. And we have to make sure that there's no explosion script and there isn't. Thank God. This is explosion light, right? And if you notice explosion light, there is no game controller accessible here. So that's the first thing. So we need to find out where this game controller class is. So I'm going to go back to this and we're going to go game controller and let's make sure it's or the explode script where it is and actually tell us where it is. If I just double click here, go, go right there. So this, I could take a reference of this out, just do one of these, right? Then it would just be an error, right? And I'm not going to compile this script because I don't really use it anywhere, but it will come back to bite me. Like if I keep looking at this now, I have a bunch of these errors, right? And that's what this thing does. If you, you have some scripts that you don't use, right, like this explode script. I'm just going to look and see if I can see all here. This, this explode script. I could delete it. And if I do that, then that's cool. It gets rid of our problem. But then now I have another problem with our controller. Take a look. And here's our controller script, which does the light and everything else. Uh, you know, and if I was to look again, I got to check my, my prefabs to make sure that that's not cool. Um, and we kind of did this last time, but I want to make sure that there's nothing else. There's my self destruct. Here's my explosion fireball. Here's my self destruct again. There's two self, the, two of them use self destruct, and this one uses a script called explosion light. But there is no controller script. This is good. So if I go back here, and theoretically, if I go to the, the controller script, which is here under explosion muzzle light you uh, thing. I should be able to delete this thing and not have a problem. But once you delete one, then there's other things too, right? So here's my control script and delete. Looks like we're good. Let's play the game as is first before we move on. Yay. And oops, that's not what I wanted. And if I we're still, we're still have the explosion happening, good. So we've modified our scripts because we need to add in our own game controller script. So then I'm add component scripts. Okay, sorry. Uh, new script. And now we can finally call it game controller. Yay. All right, there it is. There's our game controller script. I'm going to double click on here to bring it up. There it is. And right now it's empty. So we need a couple things. We need some uh, private instance variables. So we'll go private instance variables. We need two, right? Um, we need, actually, we need a couple we need, okay? Um, we need ones that are, um, are, that hold our value, okay? So one of them is a private uh, score value, so underscore score value, which is going to be of type um, uh, integer, right? So private int score value, and we're not going to initialize that right now, okay? And we also want a private int um, life, lives value, right? Um, which we're also not going to initialize. We're not going to do it here anyway. We're going to do it in here. We're going to say um, somewhere where we reinitialize our score every time the game starts. So as we game, as when we start our game and our game controller fires off, we're going to say this dot underscore score value is equal to zero. And this dot underscore lives value is equal to five, let's say. So we have five lives. Okay, so we have our lives value and score value. Now we need a couple of properties to set up for our um, to access our score value to get it, and we have one we need to set it right. So our lives our lives value um, again we can set our lives value, but I'd like to try and subtract from our lives value. So we're going to actually modify some stuff here. All right. So first let's make our getters and setters. So I'm going to kind of click on my score value, right click, and we'll say 
uh, create getter or create property. Here it is. And it tells me, ask me where I want this thing to be. I want to put, kind of put it after, after this one, press enter. And here we get our score value. And we're going to change this thing because it's public. We're going to change to uh, score. We're just going to call it score. Right? So we want to access our score, set or get our score. And we're going to say, well, if we want to get our score, we want to say get um, this dot underscore score value. That's what it's going to be. And when we set our score, this is interesting, um, we're going to um, uh, say this dot score value is equal to value. Right? So those are the two things we have there. We're going to do the same thing for our lives value. So right click, refactor, and we're just going to say create property. And we're going to put this underneath uh, this one. Right? Because enter there. And here we have our lives value. We're just going to rename this one as well. So we're going to say lives value with a capital L. And we're just going to call it lives. Right? And what we're going to say is it's going to return this dot lives value. And it's going to update this dot lives value when we set it. So there we go. These are our uh, public properties. Public properties. So we've done that. Okay, so now the reason why we're doing public properties and private instance variables is we do that in C Sharp. That's the rule, right? Actually, for object-oriented design methodologies, we always use private instance variables, public properties. It doesn't matter whether it's in C Sharp or in Java or whatever, right? So that's, that's an important uh, aspect of us programming. So here we're going to hold our score value and our lives value. That's what we're going to do here. And we're going to update. We're going to update our public value. We're going to have some public stuff that we're going to have up here. Okay, so the two public values, we're going to call these public instance variables. We're going to have some of those too. Uh, what are they going to be? Well, they're going to be the score label and the lives label, right? So we're going to say public. These are going to be exposed to the inspector, right? Which is, uh, again, an uh, integer. Uh, sorry, string. They're both going to be strings. String, um, score label. So score label and public, and you're going to say string, hold on Tom, there's a problem here, and there is, um, score uh, uh, lives label. And it's not really a string, it would be nice to have a string, right? But that's not what we want, we want them to be of type text. And in order for us to be of type text, we need to ins install a new Unity package. So we're going to say using, just like we did last time, this is all review, Unity, Unity engine, dot UI, we need to install that package in order for our text um, uh, you know, kind of object to be available. So we'll change these to text, right? And the reason why is we want to drag and drop instances of our, of our uh, UI text from the canvas into our game object to make a reference to it so we can write to it. Okay? That's what you want to do. So let's do that. So let's go, um, uh, let me see if I, do, I'll hold off for a second while you guys do this. All right, so that's the first piece. So the first piece is creating a way of us create, uh, you know, a scoring. That's what we're doing here. We're making our score work. And we get so with getters and setters, right? Now remember, this is a game controller. And anytime we declare a game controller somewhere else, right, because game controller becomes a class that's public, that's part, part of our game, we can access it and we can pass the values into this game controller object, right? But first things first, let's make a reference to this stuff in, in, in Unity. So again, if you notice, if I click away and click back to our game controller, we have two objects here um, of type text, score label and lives label, and we can take these values from here, from our canvas. So here's our score label, there it is, reference, and there's a reference to our lives label, there it is. So score label and lives la uh, label, we now have references to them. And what I want to do is, when the game starts, I want to... Uh, display my score or update my score or something like that. And I also want to get to that update score method when I have I set any value. If I set my score or if I set my uh, my lives, right? I want to update my score on the on the scoreboard. Okay, so let's go back there and try that. So I'm going to go back to and again, all I've done is drag and drop here into the controller, right? So my game controller, I take these uh, from the canvas, I take my score, my life, and I drop them in there to make references. That's what I've done. Okay. So let's go back now into, into the script side. And in here, what I want to do is I want to say this. See this, where I'm doing the score lab, lives label and uh, uh, all this kind of stuff? I want to create another private method that I call every time I update my lives or my score. Okay? That's what I want to do. So 
um, I'm going to call this thing update scoreboard or something like that or uh, one of those. So I'll make it a private. These are these are both public, right? So kind of down here, let me just add some more lines in here so I'll scroll up a little bit so you guys can see. So I'll do uh, some private methods. So here's private methods. And we'll add in there a private, right, update score method, right? And it's going to return void. So if I go over here, it's not going to return anything. It's just going to modify some of our stuff, right? And what am I going to modify with this private update score method? It's not going to actually be the score. I'm going to update my scoreboard, which is my canvas object, right? And how am I going to do that? I'm going to say, well, it's very easy. Um, this dot on uh, score label, right? This got score label dot text. The text of my score label is equal to score plus this dot underscore score value, right? Makes sense. So I'll take the score value, add it in. We concatenate it to the score label, and we set the text property of the the, the score label text object in our screen. That's how we do our score, right? Okay, let's do the same thing for our lives label. This dot uh, lives label uh, lives label dot text right is equal to life um, lives and then plus this dot underscore lives value okay so this is a method remember this this method is going to be called every time I update something well the great thing about getters and setters is every time we set a value I want to call that method right so I'm going to just do one of these I'm going to say uh, well, when I set my score, I'm going to say this dot underscore update scoreboard. Okay, so I'm going to do it there, and I'm also going to do it here. So if I update my lives, I'm going to do the same thing. So it's going to update the scoreboard, right? Every time. If I change or something, my scoreboard is going to be updated. And you know what? I might as well do it at the start. When I first start off, and I'll also update. So there's three places that I update my, my scoreboard, and that's why I made a method, because I'm using it frequently. Remember, methods and functions in JavaScript and other places like that, they're all used when we do frequently update. Okay, I like score, I like lives for these public properties, but I also want to create another public uh, property um, that I want to use to, um, it's a setter, of course, and I want to call it like add score or something like that and subtract lives. I didn't do this the other class, but why would I want to do that? So it's kind of like two other methods that I want to use. They're going to be uh, properties, right, where I set, and I'm only going to uh, get and or set the values, right? So only setters, but not getters. And it's not going to be like this. See, see, this is, a, uh, what should we call it? Um, this is called score, right? But I can get the score here or set the score, right? So I could use score and then whatever the value is, you know, get the score, and then whatever the get whatever the getter is, so I get score plus whatever this is, I could do that, right? But that's kind of a weird thing to do, right? Because I'm setting the score up. So I have to read the score and then add to it. That's kind of one thing I want to do. Or I can create another another public uh, public method, right? Again, this is another setter for score, right? It's going to return, uh, sorry, it's going to set the score, right? So uh, here's something I can do. I can kind of, kind of go public, and it'll, I'll call this set score, and I'll call it like one of those set score, the set score method. And with this public set score method, what I want to do is I want to have a set method that sets the. Um, yeah, let's try this again. Set, just like I would normally have. Just I'll write it myself. I could do one of these. Where I have a setter only. That's like a write only. Equivalent, right? Which is kind of weird, right? But what I want to do is I want to uh, set score or add score. Sorry, this would be more of an add score, not a set score. There we go. Add score. So add score. What it does is it uh, it says, um, you know, if I if I, whatever it says, if I say add score is equal to this, right? Then it'll add that score. Add score one hundred, right? So which is going to be this that underscore score value. And this is the problem that I'm having. Watch, watch this. If I if I say this dot underscore score value, how come I can't access score value? Anybody? Because I can't just have a setter. I'd love to try and do this, but I can't. So what I could do instead of this, right, I could create a public method 
public method, right? That doesn't have a setter, but rather it has a score value that, re that returns void, right? And all I'm doing here is I'm going to say this dot underscore score value, right? And then plus equals to value, which I don't have yet. Right? I'm just going to call this value, right? And we're going to get value from here. We're going to say whatever the value is. And value is going to be an integer, integer value. Same thing as a, as a setter, right? But I'm just making it more specific. So it's add score, right? And this, I can make a little comment that says uh, add score, right, to uh, score value. <clears throat> uh, instance variable. Okay, and now like like that, I want to subtract. I'm never going to add. Well, maybe I might add lives, right? But I'm probably never going to subtract score. But I might add and or subtract lives because I could add lives if I'm if I if I had to run over some kind of pickup, right? And I might be able to subtract lives, right? If someone the monster hits me or I fall down or something, right? So I could do that as well. So let's try that. So there's a couple ways I can do this, and I'm adding these methods in there right now for the score. So let's first let's copy make copy of, copy of a couple of these, and I'm going to say this one is instead of add score, it's going to be uh, add sorry add lives, right? The add lives method, which is going to take a value and it's going to say the score value or life life uh, lives value uh, plus equals to the whatever the, the value is. If I can actually just uh, spell this correctly instead of making mistakes, there we go. So that's what this does. It adds add lives to the uh, lives lives value instance variable lives value, and this one it's going to be called subtract lives. And the reason why we have this is just because we're going to subtract lives all the time, and it's going to be minus equal to the, whatever the value is. So one or whatever, and we're going to say lives value, lives value. Okay, and this is subtract little functions, right? Subtract lives from lives value. Okay, so got a bunch of uh, you know setters and getters and um, some instance, some also some some methods that act like getters and setters, that gives us the ability to add and subtract lives and all. So let's, let's just run this thing right now as is without accessing those getters and setters. All I want to do is, is set my score to five, my lives to five, lives value to five and zero. And you know, and instead of five and zero, because that would be like if we're playing male pilot, this is like maybe we'll make it a hundred and zero. Because our lives value is almost like health. Life, right, is a hundred. Okay, let's check this out and see what happens. So I'm going to go back to Unity, and everything's good, and we'll play, and if I did everything correctly, then we should have lives 100, score 0, and if I hit this, my next step is to make this thing gives us some score. So our lives are, are good, we've got this going on, and you should have that now too, if you've connected it properly, right? But I want to add score to myself, and the only way I can do that is if I make a reference to the game controller within my player controller. First of all, let's move the game controller script into scripts. So I'll do that, and then in my game, in my player controller script, which is this uh, player shooting script, this one, I want, I need to make a reference to this game controller um, object, if you will, right? So it's going to be a public instance variable that are exposed in the inspector, and we're going to call this public uh, game controller. There it is. And this is in the shooting, the player shooting.cs, and then we'll call this game controller. So we're making a reference to the game controller that exists, right? Now, we haven't done that yet. Let's go back to Unity and do that. All right, so back inside the player, under the uh, uh, gun camera, you'll see that there's a player shooting script, and now we have another space for game controller right here. Well, I'm going to drag and drop our new game controller object right here into the game controller script, this area here, the shooting script, so we have a reference to the game controller in there. Why? So that I have access this way to my uh, getters and setters for my game controller. Okay, good. So I save that, go back to uh, Unity, uh, sorry, to Mono Develop, and now 
we have to do something with game controller, right? So inside this, when I um, hit a barrel, here's the barrel one, right? When I destroy my barrel, I want to instantiate an explosion and I want to change, I want to set my, uh, or add score. Oh man, I forgot something. Did you know what I forgot? I forgot to change my game controller to add an uh, update score every time I change my score. So let's go back. Mm -hmm. da -da -da -da. And double click on this. I forgot to do that. So that also needs this uh, scoreboard update whenever I do a um, update value of any kind. So here, and I need it in here, and I also need it in here, right? Because anytime I change my 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 uh, uh, my score through an update of any kind, I update my scoreboard. I show my scoreboard immediately upon lives update or score update. Right, so whether I add, add lives, subtract lives, or add score, right, I always want to do an update scoreboard. Okay, sorry, I forgot that. Okay, go back to player shooting. So in here, here's what I want to do. Here's my, if my hit my barrel, then I destroy it and I instantiate an explosion. And I want to say this, game object, it's game controller, I'll be okay. Game controller, right, dot, and now here's all the, look at all my functions add lives, add score, all this kind of stuff. I want to add score, right? And how much do I want to add the score? I want to add a score of 100 to the barrel. So I add, add 100 points, add 100 points. That's what it's doing there. So I, I use this new method, this, this uh, setter method. It's equivalent to setter method, but it's just a private method or a public method. But it acts as a, public me a private method inside called update score, right? So every time I, I do it, I don't have to just, every time I set or any way I set a score, I set it or whatever, I update my score. And I only do it within the setter, anything I change, right? Okay, cool, let's test this out and see if it works. I'm gonna go back to Unity and I'm going to um, uh, save everything and play. And if, if I don't have any problems, when I blow up my barrel, which is falling right here, boom, I get 100 points now. So my score is working. And that's really the basis of what we want to do here in this scene. We've got everything going. We've got our lives and our score. And as we move forward, as an example, we'll fight the next barrel. And whether it's way far away, like over here, as long as our reticule can hit it, and we can get those, that, that extra point right, uh, to get that done. Okay, so that really is, uh, in a nutshell, our first level semi-complete. Um, I want to move into the second level that we're going to build today. So first, I'm going to... Uh, let's get out of this. And I'm going to file save scene and I'm going to go file save project. Then I'm going to say Unity quit. All right? Now remember the only way that we can properly set up a GitHub to work is to is to quit Unity in order for us to update. So git add dot and git commit minus m and I'm going to say added uh, scoring uh, to uh, level one. Okay, good. And then git push origin master, which is going to push our my changes now up to Unity. So you should have everything that I have. Worst case scenario, if you can't, if you didn't make it work. Okay. Part two. Let's go back to Unity. So I'm going to go open up Unity, and this is where we start a little bit behind the other class, but that's okay. Um, the good thing is I've already done this today, so um, it's going to make it a little bit faster for you guys. Okay. A um, couple things we need to do. We now have some successful uh, stuff going on with the player. If you notice, we have our player uh, and our player camera and our gun camera and all that stuff. And we have a player prefab. But remember, the player prefab only includes one level deep, player camera. It doesn't have a prefab of a prefab of a prefab. Notice. Right? Let's apply our changes to the player. That's the first thing I want to do. So it applies all these new things I just did back to the player. But because I'm going to create another level, I want a couple of things to have. Uh, we have our barrel, we have our explosion, we have our maze tile, we have our, a player. I also want to get the the um, the um, gun camera as a prefab of its own. I'm going to kind of pull that out, put it into my prefabs folder. So I want to, sometimes I want my gun camera to be a little separate. Maybe I want to do something with it later. Also, you know what? Um, I got my concrete flex and my, and my muzzle flash generic. Um, you know, impacts that I've got in my in my in my special effects, and I, but my AK rifle also has a new sight that I built onto it, even though it's sucky. I want to I still want to have that. It's a lot of work we did. So let's pull this AK rifle 
into my prefabs. All right, so we did that. And you know what? We just created our game controller, and I may want this to persist somehow. So I'm going to take this game controller and pull that into my prefabs. Okay, and one more. We also have our canvas with an image and the score and a life. And you know what? We may want to reuse that again. And I don't want to do ever ever that again, that, all that stuff we did. So let's pull that into our prefabs. So we have a lot of prefabs that we kind of created for our level. We'll save. This way, worst case scenario, if our player prefab doesn't have everything else linked into it, I can always build it again. Right? Now I want another level, right? And right now we're looking at our scene, and our scene is called main. Let's do a couple things. First, I'm going to go here, click onto our scene, and go to edit, and I'm going to duplicate our scene here. And what I want to do is I'm going to rename this scene from main to level one. And I want to rename this main one that we just made from main one to level two. It's far easier for us to create a scene and remove stuff from it. So we have the same stuff we just made as opposed to starting from scratch and adding things to it to, ho to hopefully get to the same place, right? It's far easier. So one thing is we want to just want to save uh, our scene and we want to save our project because we made some changes, right? And what I want to do is want to double click on level two because that's the one I'm going to be using. Okay, here's what I don't need. I don't need my maze tiles. So let's get rid of those from this new scene that we're building. And we don't need our, let me get rid of those. Um, I don't need my maze tile at all, so get rid of all. We have a lot of maze tiles in this in this version. I don't need my barrels. All I need is my player, my canvas for my score, my game controller, my directional light, my event system. And if I look back at my scene now, it's pretty darn dark, right? I want to make a lighter scene, and we used a new. We kind of used a skybox that was dark. Let's reset our skybox back to normal. And of course, the way to do that would be to edit. Project settings. I believe it's graphics. And if it's not graphics, then it's uh, window. I think it's lighting. There we go. Window lighting. There we go. Window lighting. Under window lighting, notice there's a dark sky skybox. We want to go back to our default skybox. I want to click on this little target, and I want to type in default. Right, default skybox. That's the one I want. And that's going to lighten up our scene again because we don't want to be of a dark sky. Like we're using a dark skybox to kind of simulate the fact that we're inside to some degree. But that's the one I want. Okay, so dark skybox. A uh, couple other things we want to do to make sure that this is done correctly is our our sun right now is we don't have a, a sun for that. We want to link it. We didn't do this this morning, but I did it later. I want to take my directional light. <laughs> Let's try that again. Window lighting. And let's let's put that lighting on the on, on uh, the inspector here, just so it's fixed. I want to take my directional light and then make that a reference to the to the sun. So my sun is my directional light, right? So I can change my the strength of my directional light and so on. My ambient source is my skybox. That's what I want. Okay. My reflective source is my skybox. Those are good things. And I don't want to change anything else right now. One day we will change a fog setting. You know, so I can also set up a fog. Uh, that kind of creates a uh, haze beyond a certain point. Let's leave that as is for now. I'm not going to do that. Okay, but so now I've got my scene. In this example, what we want to do is we want to create a, um, a terrain, which is the first time we're doing this kind of stuff, right? Now we've got a bunch of stuff in here, imported assets and materials and models and so on. And this new scene we want to do is we want to make it so that the terrain is going to be based on us entering the scene from the other scene. So we move from the from the maze, this is the game we're building, and we move into this new terrain scene, right? When we go through a door or something. We don't have that mechanism yet, but we will, right? But let's build a new scene that we're going to. So we're going to kind of go <clears throat> um, right click here in the hierarchy, and we're going to add a new 3D object that we're going to call terrain. Later on, we're going to collect ground. Notice how when I look down in here, um, I'm just going to focus on my terrain here. I'll zoom back out again. And um, I don't want to do uh, the 3D mode, but there's our terrain. Let me take a look. Looks small, huh? Our terrain. Take a look, guys, because you're going to be fin So there's our terrain that we made. All, we have, all I've done is made a terrain and I focus in on it. Right. Cool, cool. Um, we have our player. Our player object is still there. Um, it's somewhere way off in the distance, and if I was to focus on it, if I press F to focus on our player, here he is, right? Player is right here in the corner, for now. But our terrain is here, 
And when we look at the player scale, now it makes it clear that the terrain is massive. In fact, it's kind of like half a square kilometer. Okay, so that's what the terrain is. And to get a, a sense of that, let's go back to our prefabs, right, and grab our maze tile. Here's our maze tile. And drag it onto the terrain. So I'm going to kind of put it onto the terrain. And I'm going to kind of focus on my maze tile to find it. There it is. There's my little maze tile. Hey. And I'm going to pull it onto my terrain. And I'm going to kind of put it in just to give you a perspective of how big it is. Right? Remember how big that maze was. Pretty big, right? We're going to kind of put it in the middle somewhere. So we're going to kind of, you know, focus our terrain a little bit. Let's move it over. And notice how our terrain, it's kind of right in the middle, our maze tile. And let's just rotate our terrain so it's kind of equally spaced. And when I click on my maze tile, I'm going to focus in on it. There it is. And I'm going to pull it back. Right? So I think it's, I want to kind of put it right. Mm, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to pull it back, I said, from the, the uh, um, this one. There we go. Okay, cool. Things we don't want. We don't want our maze tile to sink into the ground like this. That would be bad. Might look cool for a second, but then that's not what we want. And we want it to be up a little bit like this. Okay, here's something to know about terrain, because we're going to start doing terrain in a second, guys. So I want you to pay attention, because this is what I'm going to be um, uh, testing you on next week, because next week we're going to do a little quiz, right? Um, just, to re just to read camp. Um, one thing to note is this. When I click on, let's get rid of the sliding tab for a second. When I click on the terrain in the inspector, there are several buttons here, right? We're going to use most of these buttons over the next day or so, okay? One is this one. The first one, if you look at this, is raised lower terrain. We actually can have uh, the ability for us to model our terrain, okay? Um, and there's several brushes we can use in order for us to do this. Brush size is the size of a brush. If I turn the brush size up here like this, and just watch carefully, you notice that it's, it's a much bigger brush, especially if there's different brush types. Notice there's a more uh, brush that's a little bit more stark and more uh, sharp. Right? And there's also brushes, brushes that are more sparse right, to produce different kinds of effects when we sculpt our terrain. Okay? That's one thing it does. Now, something you need to watch is something called opacity. Opacity is almost like the way we layer our terrain. When we build our terrain, when we start to raise and lower our terrain, we layer elements of our terrain by adding additional um, uh, polygons right, on top of each other to create that more of a layered effect. So we don't build our terrain with two steps. We don't click it and all of a sudden we, build, we make a mountain because it looks too fake, right? We have to build our terrain by, with, with an iterative quality. We have to kind of iterate and continue to add to our terrain, almost like we're building a sandcastle. So we start off with a base, like a foundation, and if we're, we're sprinkling some sand on, and we keep on adding it to make it more realistic. And if you've ever done any kind of real modeling, anyone, anyone ever played Warhammer 40K? Right, or anything like that. If you've done that, and you know when you're basing something, when you make a base, first you add in the sand and the glue, and then on top of that, then you start adding some other stuff. Some you start, you actually, you know, paint the base, and then from there, after you paint the base, and you go to the next part, and you add some different kinds of of uh, grass and different things, and finally you have a pretty good base. That's what we're doing really here. We're kind of adding it from the ground up. We're we're basing this our terrain. Now, other things to note is this: when we raise and lower terrain, we can never lower it below the level that we start off with. So this is the base level right here. So if I want to add water effects, like I'm going to today, I can't put my the entry point, because I'm using my tile as an entry point into the game right now, right? I can't put my entry point here. It has to be raised up higher, all right? So let us do that. So let's go back and click on my maze tile. We got one maze tile. And I'm going to use the, uh, the tool here, and I'm just going to just rotate it so we can see from an angle. I'm going to raise this up to a level higher than the terrain. And, and the reason for that, notice that it's at 4.5, right? I could also put this around 8. And this is where I had it for the last time, the last class. It's just around 8. Notice that at 8, that's 8 meters off the normal, right, off the ground. And the reason for that is because if we want to make it so that um, we have some kind of lake, or something like that, we can't lower the terrain. We can only raise it and have areas that are lower than other areas. Okay? Just bear with me when I say that. Uh, another thing to note is this. I want to look at the terrain from the top down, right, to make sure that it's cool. And sometimes what I want to do is I want to do it so that um, when I zoom in from, a, from an ISO perspective that my tile 
is pretty much, uh, you know, centered within my terrain. So it's like not, you know, kind of forward or back, just because that's where my entry point. I don't have to make this my entry point. I certainly could make it so that it's not my entry point. But this is where it's going to be. Other things to note. I want to move my player to my tile because my player's way off over here, right? So I want to kind of move my player way over here into where my tile is. I'm going to forward player down there. Still a little off, so I'm going to move this guy a little bit more. And he's going to move so that way when he enters the scene, he's going to start off at the edge of my tile, right, right here, right? So if I was to go back to um, perspective mode, make sure that my player is physically in the scene, right? Not underneath the scene like this, right? And that's important because otherwise he'll just, it'll be weird, be kind of weird, right? Let's get, kind of focus in on him. And there he is. So there's my player. He's kind of, you know, um, in the scene. He's above the scene. Right now he's looking out from the tile, almost like this is his starting point, like his platform that he starts off at, right? Important to get my player in there. Remember, all I've done is I've reused my player from scene, from level one. Okay, save the scene. Okay, cool. So I've got my tile. This is the beginning position, and this is what I'm looking out at. All right, that means when we start sculpting, this level is the, is the, is the main level for us to go to. Now, I did it differently in the first class, but I want to show you guys a different way of doing it uh, than I did for the first class. So I've got here uh, some stuff. I could raise and lower. My like, example would be this. If I go back to my, my train, and if I click this raise and lower, I could choose something like uh, this brush that I've got. I could make it so that it's a little smaller, and then my opacity, what I want to do is I want to bring my opacity way down, like four or three, okay? And then when I start drawing, watch what happens when I start raising my, my opacity. I get this kind of really weird effect. I don't want this, right? Because look how it kind of inter interferes with my level. <laughs> That's bad, right? Undo. What I want to do is I want to slowly sculpt, and I want to kind of bring the opacity way down, like to three. And I want to add my terrain, but very, very slowly. All right, so I want to kind of do that. And just to show you what the terrain looks like when I go into wireframe, here's my wireframe. And as I sculpt my terrain, right, you can see how in the wireframe, it kind of enters in my terrain slowly, slowly. Now what I don't want is my terrain in front like this. If I put my terrain in front, of my player, and it's hard for you to see, then it blocks the, the player's progress. I don't want that. So how do I just, how, how do I remove that? I press shift. So if I press shift, it lowers back down. So I can lower that back uh, to what it was. So you know, kind of remove that effect of that terrain. So kind of, I want to make the terrain kind of low here, then I can use shift to remove. Now, let's look at this in wireframe, shaded wireframe. It looks like this. This is what our, our terrain looks like. And so I want to create almost like this valley that I want. So there's a mountain on the left, a mountain on the right, and this is where a player starts. And then over here on the left, maybe on the right, I want to add in a lake. Okay, so let's start building this terrain out. And if you notice, it's, it's just res resolving. My, my machine is like, you know, just moving, by the way. And all I'm doing is slowly iterating by adding, adding, adding. And if I really want to make it larger, I can add my brush size to make it bigger. And, you know, again, just adding more and more of that mountain. That for you, it's hard to see, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to see what I'm doing here because what I'm doing is I'm slowly adding in, in, in level. If I kind of focus in, you can see from a player perspective when I move to the left that I'm kind of building up this little hill, right? Not good enough. And, and normally, you know, I would say we sculpt everything in Blender, we bring it into Unity. But this is the one case for terrain, especially trees, terrain, all that stuff. It's like Unity's built for this kind of stuff. It's really cool, right? We don't have to really you know, use another tool like Blender or Maya or something like that. We, it's kind of cool we can be uh, trained with you just like this. Um, although you can also use the other tools and you can sculpt it in Unity or Mudbrush, uh, sorry, um, one of those things. Uh, there's other, other tools we can use, right? Okay, so let's, let's uh, once we do this, this is cool, but I need to have more feedback. And I need a shader of some kind of of uh, texture that we can layer on here so we can see what we're doing a little bit easier, right? So what to do? I don't really have a texture that I can use. For example, my textures, I only have like gravel cobble, you know, whatever. I'm not, I don't really have a grass texture. Even if I look at my imported assets right now, and if I look at some of the stuff I've got, I really don't have a grass texture. So I want to bring one in. And the best thing to do is just add in a new 
package. Now we've already got 500 megs in this package, so we're going to make it like we're going to increase it to like a gig. Come on, if we don't, it's only it's only 500 megs. Come on, right? Remember, this is our build package, our, our package we're using to build stuff up. Our final build, when we, when we create a build for this, probably is going to be less than 100 meg. All right, but we take this gig of stuff and we only use the stuff. It only builds the stuff that we use. The rest of the stuff it discards. But our project becomes very big to work with. All right, so let's do that. So we're going to say assets, import package, and I want to use the default environment package. Here it is, their environment package. I'm going to kind of Im import that. Do it with me, guys. And then I'm going to, I'm going to import everything except for, I'm just going to go back down here and show you. Um, I don't care to, uh, to import the uh, tree that is a um, uh, palm tree. We're not going to do palm trees here. We're just going to do conifers and broad leaves. So we're going to kind of get rid of the palm tree. Right? We don't care about that, but the rest we want to import. Okay, so we're going to say import. And what this does is it imports these standard assets, takes some time. Do, 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 do. And as it imports, there's going to be a whole whack of assets that's going to give us and textures, which is what we need in order for us to make this, you know, a little bit more palatable to, you know, to us when we start sculpting. Else it's going to be hard for us to see what we're doing. Like this. Okay, cool. So we've got these uh, assets we just imported. But you know what? It's inside the standard assets folder, which I don't like. I want to put this environment folder that comes with standard assets. I want to dra drag and drop that into our imported assets folder that we already have. So I'm going to kind of take the environment folder, drag and drop it into our imported assets folder. Okay? And then we can get rid of standard assets, the standard assets folder, because I don't like that. I don't want to use that one. Yay. Okay, so save the scene. Cool. Now, when I go back to terrain, now what I can do is this. I can go to this fourth um, icon here inside our terrain. Click on the fourth icon. And notice, by the way, this one's a raise and lower. This one is a paint height. We're going to talk about that in a bit. This one is a smooth height. This one is a paint texture. We want that, but we don't have any textures defined. We have to define a texture. And we're going to do that by clicking Edit Textures. In the Edit Textures, we want to click Add Texture. When we click Add Texture, we're going to add an albedo which is like a diffuse texture, right? I'm going to add an albedo texture to use. I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to search for something like grass. I'm going to say grass. And there's a bunch of them. One of them is this grass hill albedo, which is what I want to use, grass hill albedo. So let's use that. Yes, this. And then change this from 15. This is the size of our, of our uh, actual tile. From 15 to 30. You might even want to go higher so it doesn't tile as much. For now, let's go 30. Okay, it's just our base texture, if you will. Cool, and click Add. And once we do that, bam, we've got like texture in the entire map. Now we want this because we want to see what the hell we're doing, right? Because we can't see it another way, right? So let's just open this up. And just let me close this up first so I can see more of it. And while I'm while I'm dialing this up, you guys do the same thing. I want to build, like I said, this little mountain over here. And the way to do that, of course, is to go here and uh, start uh, raising uh, this up, and again, I'm, I made my, my brush pretty good, so I'm gonna raise it, raise it up, and I'm gonna kind of iterate along this area just to raise my mountain side up. And again, it looks kind of doughy, and we're gonna kind of, if I wanna drop it down, if it's too much on this side, I can certainly drop it near my uh, my little area here, right? But as I go around, I wanna kind of create an area where, again, I raise the mountains up, and, you know, I'm almost creating a valley uh, you know, in this this area over here, and by the way, you're going to see how big it is. It's massive, this thing. But if I take it a little bit uh, to a larger scale, I can create this area here where I have these, uh, like this mountainous area. But I've got to do it slowly. I can't, I can't do this quickly because what's going to happen is it's going to be, it's going to look too weird, right? So again, I'm going to kind of build it up, build it up. And all I'm doing is adding, and notice that my opacity is really small here. If I up this opacity, like 20 or something like that, then I get mountains really fast. And I want to be very careful with that because what happens is I get one of those. See that? So undo. So that's why I don't want to, if anything, you want to click this area, not drag, if you're going to have a high opacity, right, as an example, because otherwise you're going to get something that won't resemble a mountain at all, right? And you want to make it so it's more natural looking. Than, um, than not. So let's move this right back down to like something like seven or something. A little bit more than three, but we're going to change this opacity around. Notice how my computer is spinning out of control here because I'm actually rendering on the bottom right here. 
on the bottom right here, notice how this is rendering in real time, right? Because this is what's happening, right? This is, it's really processor intensive, right? Because it's, you know, doing a lot of stuff. So let's continue to add. So again, I'm kind of adding this, and kind of adding this area here. And this little lake is going to go, right? And continue to add, 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 add. And maybe a little bit of a bump, and a little bit of a bump there. So I want this lake, and one part of the lake to be there, and I want to make a little bit of a shore too. So again, continue to add. Maybe we'll make more of a mountainside here by adding, adding, adding. And keep adding in mountains and hills. And it's very, very soft looking, right? Let's continue to do that. And when I do that, I want this area over here to be like a natural area where there is uh, almost like a, a beach. We're making this corner, this back corner over here. And so this, uh, this is kind of your art class for today, guys. You know, we'll do it here, a little bit of mountain on this side. So mountains. I'll make these back mountains over here really much taller than these ones. Right? So kind of add to these mountains over here as we sculpt. This area here will be just with these trees. And again, you can plan your area as much as you want. I'm doing it from a very high level. And again, I'm doing it so that way we can see what's happening here. And if it's not high enough, I can always add to it, right? So let's continue to do that by sculpting. Don't sculpt too high, because again, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get something that looks a little bit more unnatural. We're going to come in and uh, change how this looks in a bit, right? But again, what I want to do is create this little uh, area here where there's high, higher mountains for the player so to start off. And so when he kind of passes by this little valley that he kind of passes into, and with some higher mountains on the one side and the other. And a little bit more here with some stuff. It looks pretty crazy, right? Looks like, you know, not, not too much. But you can see how big it is. Look how big the tile is. Way over here, there's lots of stuff. So like tons of tile. Okay. This is good. But what I want to do now is I want to use the second icon, which is right here, the second selection. And I'm going to go back to my um, maze tile for a second. Let's just focus back on the maze tile. Okay. What I want to do is I want to bring the land so that it matches the maze tile. So when I click on terrain, and if I click on this one, the second one, notice that my height is four and a half. You can make this whatever you want. And my opacity is seven. Okay, so how do I draw this one? What I want to do is to kind of draw it up and it kind of matches to, to, to this um, four and a half. It doesn't go below it. Notice how this becomes this channel of everything which, that's going to come with the minimum height. So I want to kind of lower my maze tile to around the same. So I'm going to kind of click on my maze tile. And I don't want it to sink into the ground, right? So because if it goes beyond there like that, that's too low. I'm going to bring it up just a touch. And so that way, if you notice here, I'm 4.55. If I go 4.5, I'm actually in the ground. So that's not good. Maybe like 4.6, you know, something like that. 4.6, 4.55. And if I want to focus in there to see what it looks like, just so we can see uh, what the what the ground looks like. We've got to make sure that our maze tile appears to be on the ground, but not in the ground. Okay, so that's why I'm showing you this like this. Right? Not bad. Okay, so that's our maze tile. So about 4.5. And that's going to be our height for the rest of the screen. So because, let's kind of go over here and you can see that what I'm doing is I'm putting this on a plateau. And again, remember I told you the reason why we're doing this is because I cannot have an, uh, any water effects if I, I can't push down anything below the level that it started, right? I can't do that. I've got to create almost this plateau, and it's got to be everywhere except for those areas that are flattened. Okay, so let's add them in. So again, I'm going to click on the second one again, and in this middle area here, I'm going to raise it up so that it's the same uh, level. I'm going to kind of go out here to show you what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to kind of raise this up so this is the same level. And here it is. And let's make our, our uh, brush size really massive and also sharper so we can see it. This is our sharper brush, right? And maybe you want to add in some uh, shaded wireframes so we can see what I'm talking about here. And notice how when I spin around and I kind of go up, I can see that this area here is very flat, but the other area is not. I want to, kind of, I want to show you the shaded wireframes you see. What I'm doing, so you can see it on the wireframe as well. See how that I'm making it all the same height here, right? But over here, it's the a depression. It's lower here, and there's some areas here that are lower too. We're going to fix that. Let's go back to shaded. 
Notice though that I'm saying, I'm kind of making it so that all these areas here are the same height so that we don't have any lake that's over here. But we do want to make kind of like this shore area right here where there is a bit of, in here, a beach, a beach front. But over here, in this area here, they're all the same height with our front area, right? So that's what's going to happen. So that's what this does. That's what this pink height does. It kind of makes it so it's easier for us to have this area here. Okay, good. Now at this height, I can start drawing more mountains. So I can go back here. And you know, let's make our brush a little smaller now. More control, more control. Time. And continue to paint these mountains higher because this is what we want to do. We're going to kind of add these mountain ranges here. We're going to make sure that it's the right uh, thing here. Right? And again, I can add blocks of mountains like this. Definitely, I can do one of these and kind of smooth those areas out, kind of to show this wrinkly mountain area. Definitely over here, I want to make that higher. I don't want to have that any lower than what we've painted in that area, right? Let's take a look, right? And the same thing goes, now what if I use a rougher brush? The rougher brush is really cool. But before I do that, let's add another material to see what I'm doing here, to show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to add, right now I only have one material, which is this grassy texture. I want to add another texture, add a texture, and I'm going to add a material, and we're going to go back to grass. So let's say grass. And we'll add a material that is, we've added a grill, uh, grass hill albedo, right? I also want a kind of grass rocky albedo. Let's add that in. So this is this one, a darker one. I also want to tile this at uh, 30 by 30, because I don't want it to be too tiled. It's already too tiled, right? We want to kind of mesh it in, add that in. Click on this one. And again, I want to use this kind of a larger brush with a very low opacity. And as I scoop in to see what it looks like, I can see that I'm going to change the, uh, the way the hill works here so that it's a different color. It looks like more of a, you know, a rocky hill as opposed to the bottom over here, which looks more of a green grass, right? So again, you have to kind of come out. And you can use bigger brushes for this. Like, for example, I can go to a brush of 100 size because I'm just going to brush this area here, these areas that are more... Um, mountainous or rocky, I'm going to brush them more with this other color. And yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And again, it'll help me identify areas that are low and high so I can add mountains to them, like this area here. This is kind of an area that I want to kind of draw in. And you've got to be careful. Again, if you if you overdraw, it's okay. Because you can always come back and, and you know, uh, subtract that area. And I want to kind of frame it so that just where the hills are, there's a bit of this other stuff going on. So more of a this rocky ground kind of idea, right? And then around it, over here, I want it to be more muddy, right? Around the, the area. Again, I think there's still, if I was going to look in here, and if I was going to look at the player, what the player would see, he would see something like this, right? And I still think this is a little bit too low for the player. I think I want to still bring it up higher. So, um, and I want, to, I want a kind of a scratchy height, so I want to use some of these other kind of brushes. Let's try and use this brush to kind of make it a little bit more craggy. So, there we go. So, more craggy kind of brush, I'm using a different brush, yeah? That kind of brings up the level, more craggy mountaintop kind of idea, right? And, again, I'm kind of just bringing those crags up. Same thing over here, with more of a craggy look to it, and... You know, so it doesn't look like it's like ice cream, but rather it looks more of a mountain, mountain top. You know, kind of thing. You see how it, as I add things in, the details, it kind of um, adds in a little bit more of that rough shape to it. Right, here we are. Okay, cool, cool. So we've added some different shapes here, a bit of a hill, uh, quite a bit of roughness over here. And let's even add some other, uh, other spots that are really a little bit peaky. So I can kind of add kind of a peakiness to it, like a jaggedness at times, right? So I can add some jagged peaks, right, to the mountains with a different kind of brush, right? And now I want to change my, I want to add another uh, uh, terrain type. So right now I've added some textures, so kind of like the grass texture. I've added in the uh, other texture, which is more of a uh, rocky grass texture. Let's add one more and another another texture I'm going to add in, and it's going to be more of a muddy type texture. Um, so again, so I'll select this one, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put in mud, so I know we have one. And there's this mud rocky albedo. And by the way, there's also a mud rocky normal. Remember what normals are? I'm going to test you on this. What's the difference when you have a texture? What, do a, what does a normal map do for you guys? Again, you guys remember? So a texture, what it does is a very flat. It's a flat image. But a normal map makes it look like it has a little bit more of height to it. Like it looks more deep. It look, makes it more realistically looking, right? So if I make it look like rock, the texture is flat, but the normal map is kind of, it kind of uh, takes the dark and light areas and creates almost like a, uh, an illusion of depth and height, right? And so it does. So it saves us polygons. Okay, let's take a look. So here in my, in the albedo piece, I want to use this one, right? And then here in my, uh, my normal map, so I have a normal, again, I can, uh, you know, kind of go mud. And I can choose this purple mud rocky normals one to add in the normal map as well. And I also want to change this uh, mud rock to 30. I'm going to change this to 30 as well for the tiling. And click add. You know, maybe I want to modify that. How do I modify texture? So I click the texture, edit it, go back to edit texture, and change the pattern to 50. Let's make it quite larger. Okay, so from a scaling, that's just the way the way it repeats. Okay, cool. I don't want this one. That's just way big, right? I want back to this one here. And I want to reduce the size of this thing a little bit to this. So now what, are, what does this mud texture do? Well, it looks like this. So if I drag it just carefully here, it adds this kind of mud relief. And I think it's too much, so I'm going to undo that. So what I want to do is even drop this opacity even more, right, to 3, and drop my strength down a lot too, because this one has strength, because I have, I have a... Um, normal map attached. So I'm dropping it to like 0.28. What I'm doing here is I'm adding this look and feel of this rocky, muddy area here around the base of my, almost like this used to be the base of my ravine, if you will, this area here that I'm using. Again, I'm kind of drawing it around here, and then I'm kind of making it so that it, it adds a craggy, more of a rough area on the bottom. And you know, in here, completely, I think this is where I'm going to put more of that stuff. So I'm going to kind of drag it in here. And let's just move it around so we can see it more. We're kind of way far away. And notice how I've, I've just kind of added this rocky, almost like a scaly type to it. That's what it does. It makes it more scaly looking over here. And, uh, you know, added this. Again, nice, nice drawing class. Now, normally, you have an artist doing this. But you guys are the artist today. Right, there we are, like this. And we've got this part over here, and in there, and maybe some over there, huh? So we kind of pull up, and back down here, and not too far, and just add some areas in here that are more craggy, especially in, in this little ravine area here, because we make this more muddy looking. Right, so add in this cragginess to it. See, so yeah, you can actually get a pretty cool effect going on when you do this kind of stuff, right? So it kind of adds this in there. And, you know, again, more of this cool muddy type effect. I probably can even add it in there just to, for the edges. And over here, maybe even in there. Right around this area here and even on the outsides. Right, because we want to add areas where there's just a bunch of muddy areas. So again, I'm giving the player the experience of, hey, this is a really craggy looking, muddy, you know, kind of, and I'm, I remember I'm, I'm scaling with a very small amount of, of uh, there we go, opacity so that it blends. That's what the opacity allows you to do. It kind of blends in that muddy, rocky kind of, you know, uh, sense to it. I kind of like that. What do you guys think? All right, let's test and see what we've got so far. So we've done a kind of a, a bunch of stuff, and I want to test this out. Let's see what it looks like when I play. Remember, we do have a character in play, and here he is, right? Here's my player, and it's massive, right? This is what it actually looks like, right? But let's see how it actually runs. If I run, I can run for a while. It's a kilometer. Like, literally, it's pretty far, right? Run up the scale. What about if I jump up here? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, baby. I've got like no control. There's no. I, I've got no falling power whatsoever. I can go right to the top of the mountain if I want, right to the okay. peak, right? Because it, I haven't put any kind of control over the the um, uh, the gravity, right? Or any kind of you know control over the pretty small. So if I fall from here, I should die, right? So, uh, but I don't because there's nothing in there that stops me from from falling. And this would be where the um, the uh, uh, water is going to be, right? So I'm going to jump up here a little bit, go up the mountain, and run. I'll run up the mountain. And I can do that because I'm Superman. I, I, I'm Spider-Man. I can stick to the mountain. I'm a billy goat. Right? And then you can see how, you know, we've got a bit of the ridge. This is good. And as we come down, you see how the, this is the, you know, kind of the muddy effect we got down. So we can see, we can explore the terrain. And if there's any problems, you'll see them right here. This is going to be a bit of an issue, you can tell right now. Um, because it's kind of a bit, bit of a drop here. But this is going to be, this flat area here is where our lake is going to be, right? So this is where it's going to be. And I want to make this more of a beach type. Um, I might have to lower that a little bit. And you can do that. But that's going to be more of a cliff than a beach, right? Like, look at that. That's going to be pretty, pretty low. So um, we can lower that piece a little bit. So that's the first thing I figured out. Um, and that's what we tested for. We tested to see, hey, do I need to do any other lowering or raising or anything else like that? And I probably do. You probably have to do the same thing for your game. So I'm going to kind of come in here. It looks like there's nothing here, right? Like, take a look. Like, really, it looks like nothing, right? But when we kind of come closer, you can see that there is a big ridge here. And so what I want to try and do is just lightly lower this area. And so I'm going to go back to this lower raise, and I'm going to take uh, this one with a pretty simple brush and press the shift key, just, just tapping it a little bit. Not a lot though. The more I tap it, then you know I want to kind of take the ridge too too low because otherwise the we're gonna have areas where there's gonna be you know a bit of a beach. It's gonna to have to kind of ride up there, right? And same thing here. So just lower that a little bit lower. Gradual, right? Gradual beach. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like much of a beach, right? So we need to have a couple of other things. I want some sand, like almost like a sandy looking thing. So let's add another texture before we end uh, for this one. So go back down here, and add another texture. And we're going to add texture, and we'll add some sand. So let's just see if there's any kind of sand. I'm going to say sand. And there's that sand albedo. This is kind of cool. And we'll add that one. I'll, I'll leave it at uh, 30 and 30 for this one, because we don't need that much. And um, I'll say add the sand texture. So this is the one I want now. And again, I want my brush size to be fairly big, bigger than this, maybe 60 or something like that. And I kind of come in here and I want to kind of brush the sand in here. So here's my sandy area. There's my sandy area. I want to create almost like this dune, right? That's here. And with some lighter and darker areas here like this, right? So I'm kind of, you know, just skipping out here and I've got my little sand sandy area here where I've kind of created this this area that's rounder and then in here I'm probably going to make that muddy right so we're going to get that mud back so again sand to here maybe in here a little bit so I'm, I'm kind of layering it on top of the you know the whole um, uh, dune here and maybe even even here I didn't do that in the first class but I can probably do that here um, because again I want to uh, the more you layer it right um, the more realistic it can be, right? So a little bit more sand over here and in there, maybe over here, makes it drier looking, right? So kind of dry looking sand area. This is where our water is going to be, right? Okay, so there we go. And again, go back to the sand area, which is selected. Kind of put that in there as well. So sandy, sandy beach. What do you think? It's kind of a sandy area to it. And I can add more rocky-like effects as well if I want to be more uh, subtle with all that kind of stuff. And uh, now that's cool and all, but you know what? It's really not a great effect, right? So, I mean, I want it even sandier, even yellow, more yellow than this. I don't have one like that. So what do I do? Of course, I can go to the CG Texture Store and grab one. And let's do that. So I'm going to go to uh, the internet here. And I'm going to go to cgtextures.com, and I want to look for some kind of sand, and uh, kind of enter there, and I might see something that's uh, sandy, right? 
and I see this is not bad. This is not a bad one. But I think I like uh, the one that's down here, this one. This one's pretty cool. Um, again, cgtexture.com, I, I search for sand, and I'm pretty much down here, um, you know, below the crackling area here, and it's almost down to the last um, area. There's this one, that's not bad, and there's this one, right? So I kind of kind of torn between this one, which is a little lighter, and there's even ones that are darker. That's kind of a little, that's a little, kind of really rough, right? I don't want to go too much, but you see there's just tons and tons of them. So I want to choose something that's between this one might be good. So let's choose that one. Notice that there's a little bit, this is a little bit brighter, right? And I'm gonna choose credits, right? Because I can do some free credits if you're assigned in, I am. And it's called Soil Beach, that's what it is. So I'm gonna directly dump that into my desktop. So I'm gonna go to desktop and in my uh, Unity projects, I'm gonna go into um, my um, uh, FPS demo section one and into my assets. And into my textures, I'm going to put in this, and it's just going to be called soilbeach.jpg. So I, I don't need to have the soil beach numbers in there. So I'm going to say save. I've got my soil beach in there, and then when I go back to Unity, um, it's already there under textures. See, so texture soil beach. And notice it's a texture that repeats and everything else. 2048 is pretty big. Um, that's okay. It's a little bit bigger than the first class I did, but that's fine. Um, but I can use this texture now. Um, in to draw this by just going back to the terrain. So terrain, I'm going to go to texture, I'm going to add a new texture, edit textures, add a texture, and we're going to go search for soil, because it's called soil beach. Soil beach, there it is, soil beach, right? And I'm just going to make this again a 30 by 30 texture. And we'll take a bit of a break when we do this one. Okay, there's, a, there's my, um, my, my texture, and let's make this a little bit larger larger brush and we're going to brush it here along the beachfront and I definitely have this low low target strength and I have to all I'm doing here is I'm adding more more sand to the beach here so I'm kind of layering you know the sandy area here right where I'm going to have more uh, sand you know kind of a sandy uh, you know area on top of the other stuff I've got going on right so a little bit of there and make this more sandy more of a sandy dune Notice how I'm getting some awesome little effects going on now. Okay, cool. And um, what I also want to do is make sure that it's kind of layered in here um, with some of the other things. So, you know, here there's going to be a little bit of mud because it's going to be, when it goes to sand, it's going to go to mud. So I want to kind of layer the mud thing again. So go back to the texture draw and hit my mud area, this one here, and then kind of layer this muddy area here, right? So that this is all muddy, right? And if it's not strong enough, like, so I wanna make this a little bit darker than the other areas here while I layer it. Again, I'm just drawing this around by iterating around this area, make it a little uh, darker. And again, you know, for some people, this can be quite boring to watch, but the great thing about this is once you've got this, you know, thing here, you can create almost like this real layered, um, realistic effect to it. And because our water is going to sit in here, it's got to be kind of darker. And even, you know what, I'm almost at the point now where I want to uh, want to even add a little bit more opacity in here into this darker area, this darker region where the water is going to reflect. So let's add this a little bit more opacity and strength. So we're going to go here and over here like this, add a little more opacity and strength. Make our brush even larger, right? And then you know, draw this stronger kind of muddy area here. Uh, I don't like that last one uh, here, where it kind of layers on top of the stuff we already got. And again, same thing with our. Oops, undo that. Uh, same thing with our um, in the in this area here. Kind of add in some areas that are darker and, and deeper, like this maybe might be a deeper area than up there, representationally, right? And so we have some areas of, of different concentration. Okay, cool. So that's, we've got our, um, as much as we can do with our sand and our beach, and I think it's a great place to stop and take a short break. When we come back, we'll do the rest of this stuff. We'll add some water, and we'll add some trees, <laughs> and we'll almost have a complete uh, little place to play with.
Okay, and let's pause uh, for, a short, for a short break. I'm going to save my uh, save my project. I'm going to save my uh, scene, which is important to do, and I'm going to stop.